Mr. Shea, Mr. Shea, the name right now is Mr. Shea. All right, it's Mr. Shea again. You might remember me from places like school or on the street or even at the grocery store. But today we are on YouTube. And today we're looking at the Neolithic Revolution, a fine revolution and one of the most important revolutions in the history of humankind. So we know it's good. Um, so that's what we're looking at. And to remind you, Neolithic. Neo is new. Lithic is stone. So we're looking at the revolution of the new stone age. So what's going on with that? So what we're looking at for this Neolithic revolution is really the changing ways people are living when it comes to namely uh, farming as well as raising animals and this revolution doesn't happen just in one area uh, we have humans homo sapiens spread out across the planet by this point point. and if you look at this map uh, the dark green are really the main places that it's occurring um, so almost in the center up to the right a little uh, it's called the Fertile Crescent uh, it's one of the biggest areas but we also have it in China uh, South America to your left as well as in North America both in the uh, Central Plains as well as down in Mexico so the development of agriculture is occurring across the planet um, almost simultaneously certainly there's some time in between it's not happening in one year uh, but the development does happen pretty quickly um, in separate areas. And if you look at the arrows, this is just where it's spreading to. So it starts in some areas and then spreads out across the rest of the planet later on. And what is agriculture? Well, it starts with people. Um, so we have individuals that are living, namely the hunter-gatherer life. So they're living in pretty temporary houses, uh, they're living in camps, uh, hunting and gathering, so perhaps to your right you have fishing. Um, so people are really living this hunter-gatherer life. And that life has been described by some, uh, this one Thomas Hobbes, a famous uh, social theorist, the hunter-gatherer's lives were solitary, poor, nasty, brutish, and short. So in general, a lot of theorists don't see the hunter-gatherer lives as very promising. Um, granted, we'll have a debate on whether we agree or not, but uh, the change becomes with agriculture. And agriculture is really the uh, science of farming, of you're changing the soil to grow crops and to raise animals. So instead of you finding them, you are changing the environment uh, so that you can control, namely, your source of food. So that includes, like here, uh, you're going to be plowing fields. In that last image, people are by hand digging up crops. So it's any creation of farming is really what we're looking at. And the first crops were wild. Um, people were finding these food sources as they had been as hunters and gatherers for thousands of years and uh, they were just plants that grew naturally in the wild. Now as people started to grow them into farms, um, you look at this, these are wheats. Once you start farming you can start controlling crops and there's a whole process of uh, putting some crops together and creating new varieties and new species of plants and these are varieties of wheat so over time as humans start to grow them and raise them uh, what starts as very small on the left the wild wheat the seeds what you use to make flour and other things grow much larger and you can produce way more food so eventually um, humans are able to create an abundance of 
very large uh, filling crops that uh, a large amount of people can eat. So the big question is why? Why did this all happen? And there's a lot of different theories. One of the biggest theories is that the climate changed. So at the end of the ice age, the glaciers, glaciers retreated and you actually had a very dry spell. So the planet became uh, extremely arid, extremely dry. And the places where uh, people might have previously hunted and gathered dried up. And the areas then that were left with uh, water were mostly around rivers. So you have people that started settling and moving closer to the rivers. Now when there's a lot of people in one area, that hunting and gathering, which needs a lot of space. Remember, these people are nomadic. They're always moving around. And when suddenly all these people are now in one area, they had to start to figure out a different way of getting food. And also with the changing climate, uh, more plants that are able to be farmed started to arise as well. So those plant species also adapted, also evolved to survive. And it happened that those evolutions allowed them to be farmed. Um, so it's the first one is this dry season that now these wild plants can be grown uh, much e more easily. We also um, certainly have theories that the populations are increasing. So since people are becoming better and better at surviving, this is also a product of the populations are much larger and they needed more food to sustain each other. So not simply just the climate changing, but the fact that there's far more people um, and people are specializing in their jobs. So the uh, specialization plus the need to feed more people is going to result in uh, people planting crops, people planting seeds to realize that uh, they could control where things that they wanted to eat would grow. Uh, and really that's all that farming is. You're growing food that you want to eat in large quantities. And the final theory, uh, at least the one that we'll discuss now, is neither of these in regards to people or food, but religion. So. A couple theories are, have previously said that religion arose after people settled in one area. Um, however, more evidence is coming out that people have had religion as hunters and gatherers, that they were constantly uh, for thousands of years considering what was beyond what we could see. So there's an idea that religion actually brought people to settle and to start farming. Because if you had holy places, if you had uh, religious buildings, then people would want to settle around them because those are important to humans uh, throughout history. So there's also the idea that since people were settling and wanting to be close to these areas, then uh, religion, in fact, brought people together and that meant that more food needed to be produced, uh, which resulted in agriculture. So those are a couple theories as to the rise of agriculture. Um, and when it comes to the impact of agriculture, it results in towns and cities. So no longer are people hunters and gatherers and nomadic. Certainly there are some groups that are remaining like this, but as a whole it is establishing what we see today on this planet, uh, which is cities and towns and people staying put in one home, in one house, in one building. Uh, if you look at this image here, we start to see massive cities growing of thousands of people, and it's really going to shape the way the world and humans live. So we'll be debating whether or not those changes are positive or negative, uh, but the changes are here to stay, and uh, we've lived through them since the Neolithic Revolution.